Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from round 4 of the event that we are currently covering, the start of the Grand Chester in Bucharest. Uh, it's a classical event and uh, it really shows uh, how different classical games are and this game is another perfect example because uh, th there's just so much happening and it's uh, hard to imagine that, um, uh, well, it's possible for, for a classical game where, since we're all used to now really, really uh, quick play, you know, rapid bullet uh, blitz and... Uh, uh, well, uh, extreme engine preparation, but here, uh, as you'll see, we get out of book already on move 6. So without further ado, it's Wesley So with the white pieces and he opens with C4. He goes for the English opening, uh, we have E5 by Fabi and now G3. Uh, we have knight to f6, bishop to g2, uh, fianchetto in the light square bishop, bishop to c5, and now d3. So this is now very, very rare. Knight to c3 is, uh, well, it's a bit more uh, uh, often played, but d3, very, very rare. Uh, we have c6, knight to f3, and now d6. And now uh, this position has been reached before. It was, uh, for example, reached in 2019 in the game between Anish Giri and Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, that game ended by Giri winning. And in that game, knight to c3 was played. But here uh, we just have castles by Wesley. And it is already as of move 6, like we announced, uh, that we have a completely new game. So here, Fabi castles as well. We have knight to c3 and now a5, grabbing more space here. Uh, on the queen side, preventing any future expansion from white, so this bishop will be very safe here. And also, uh, Fabi is just playing, uh, planning a4 and bringing the queen over to a5. So here we have d4. Uh, Wesley doesn't uh, want this pawn to, to remain here, so he just uh, wants to trade it off. Uh, we have captures, captures, and now a4. Uh, as planned, we have rook to b1. Also, you, you might... Um, have to worry about a3 at some point, you don't want to ruin your pawn structure like this. So here just rook to b1, and now a3 can always be met with a simple b4. So here rook to e8 by Fabi, and now e3. Uh, we have queen to a5, and now comes bishop to d2. So now uh, the queen is... Um, uh, uh, on the same diagonal as the bishop, but uh, here's a very nice uh, idea. We have bishop to g4, attacking Wesley's queen, now asking, do you want to go back or do you want to kind of mess up your pawn structure by playing f3, and Wesley even welcomes it. He plays f3, uh, attacks the bishop here, we have bishop to h5, and now knight to e4, a move that would not be possible if the black queen wasn't uh, uh, under attack, uh, because you just capture it, the f pawn will not be able to capture back, because the queen on d1 will be hanging. So here, Fabi brings the queen back, we have queen to d8, and now knight captures on c5, eliminating a very, very strong bishop here. Uh, we have d captures on c5, and now knight back to e2. So Fabi now has a double c pawn, uh, but he also was uh, able to, to kind of mess up Wesley's pawn structure here on the king side. So here, queen to d3. Fabi says, all right, uh, I've messed up your pawn structure a little bit on the king side, I'm going to capture the c4 pawn, there's not all that much you can do about it, and then I'm gonna uh, also be attacking your a2 pawn, but Wesley uh, prepared for this and he plays knight to f4. He attacks the queen, the bishop, and it's not a problem, the bishop is defended, uh, but what's the idea behind giving the pawn? How do you uh, gain compensation for that? Well, uh, it's incredible how Wesley does it. Queen captures on c4 and now comes b3. And now uh, the problem is the queen doesn't have all that many squares. So you have to capture and after pawn captures, again, uh, the queen doesn't have uh, all that many squares. This is covered by the pawn, this is covered by the pawn, this is covered by the bishop, by the pawn, uh, by the knight, by the knight. So the only two squares uh, where the queen is not captured right away is b5 and a6, or we can even color that dif differently. Uh, the problem is only queen to b5 is playable, and this is what Fabi plays. Uh, if, he, if Fabi plays queen to a6, this loses on the spot, and it's... Uh, uh, just a beautiful little trick, so feel free to pause the video here and try to uh, find a refutation for queen to a6 while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting that the bishop here is kind of hanging. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop to c3. So congratulations to everyone who found this. Now the idea is simple. Uh, you cover the a1 square, so rook to a1 is coming, but also just bishop captures on f6 uh, is the threat to eliminate the defender of the bishop on h5. And you cannot prevent both threats. If you 
uh, try and save the bishop. For example, you play something like knight b5. Uh, now you attack the bishop on c3. It's not a problem. We still just play rook to a1 and the queen gets attacked here. So here we're going to play bishop cap a knight captures bishop on c3, attack white's queen, rook captures queen, we're going to play knight captures queen, and now after rook captures rook, uh, black is simply down too much material. You can play rook d8 to defend the knight here, but then you're going to lose the bishop here. And if you counted the pieces, white is up a whole rook. Uh, unless I miscounted, sometimes I miscount, but this time I did not. So here, white is up a rook. So uh, after a capture some b3, Fabi plays the only move uh, that does not lose the game, uh, and that is queen to b5, and now comes e4. And now uh, you can see that uh, this is uh, Wesley's plan. Uh, Fabi is now up a pawn, but uh, his uh, queen is a bit out of the game. Uh, his pieces are not really developed. The rooks are not connected. The knight still needs to get into the game, and this bishop is still uh, not the, the most impressive uh, bishop we've, we've seen on this channel. So uh, he brings the bishop back, bishop to g6, now the knight can move, and now bishop to c3, grabbing hold of this long diagonal. We have knight to a6 by Fabi, he wants to shift it into the game uh, somehow, uh, and now h4. Uh, and here Fabi uh, played something uh, well a bit too premature maybe he played h5 here uh, but white uh, white wasn't um, uh, threatening a move like uh, h5 anytime soon uh, so here uh, a move like rook 8 to d8 maybe to, to, to get the other rook into the game uh, but okay uh, he played h5 and now Wesley finds another beautiful idea and that is queen to c1 so what do you play here? Uh, you constantly have to worry about knight captures on g6. You constantly have to worry about bishop captures on f6. So what can you play here? The problem is if you play something like rook to a, rook a to d8 now, that was a great idea a moment ago. Now uh, white just goes for a nice capture fest here. Knight captures, f captures, bishop captures, g captures, and now queen to h6. Now the g pawn falls and that's it. The uh, White will just get... Uh, uh, black will just get destroyed here for example king f7 you defend it uh, first you deliver check and then you pick up the g6 pawn so instead after queen to c1 we have king to h7 by fabi uh, but now comes rook to d1 there is no rush to, 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 to grabbing material uh, we have rook 8 to d8 and now queen to b2 attacking the knight here uh, there's a double attack so we're going to win the pawn as well and the knight has nowhere to go so you can't really move the knight uh, as we're going to lose the g7 pawn so here we have c4 by fabi now the queen uh, also is uh gaining access to the fifth rank and you are threatening to create a pass pawn here uh, but wesley says that's not an issue so here just bishop captures on f6 g captures and now queen captures on f6 so what do you play here? We have rook captures on d1 as the rook is, uh, well, in trouble here. It's attacked twice. That's a weird arrow again. So rook captures on d1, rook captures on d1, and now comes queen to c5 with check. The problem with creating a pass pawn here with c captures on b3 is just rook d7, and that's it. There is no defending this. Uh, you can just capture here, then capture here. Uh, or even if the rook defends the pawn, then we can even play this queen captures on g6 as the f pawn is pinned. So... Uh, you know, that's that's just it. So instead, after rook captures on d1, we have queen to c5 with check. Fabi tries it like this, king h2, and now queen to e7, offering a queen trade. But now Wesley says, all right, uh, now I will trade queens, and now I'm going to be up a pawn. So queen captures, rook captures, and b captures on c4. So... It's a classic case of uh, uh, going down a pawn, gaining an extremely active position, and then to defend, Fabi had to not only give back the pawn, but also give up an extra pawn. So really, really impressive how well Wesley prepared for this, as uh, like you saw, we had a new game uh, already as of move 6. But he's only up a pawn. Uh, it's not. It's very hard to, to win this against a guy like Fabi. He is the number 2 rated chess player in the world in classical chess. So king to g7 and now uh, bishop to h3. And bishop to h3, I don't know if uh, for those of you who are maybe older subscribers to the channel, I often used to mention uh, Josh Waitzkin when he used to give uh, advice on the old chess master 9 or, or maybe 9 or maybe 910 or the grandmaster's edition. And um, uh, there is this great chess academy that you, if you guys can grab a hold of this program, it's uh, I, I think it, it would still be... Uh, of great use and then he said uh, always when you're trying to find a plan or to you know how to 
uh, proceed in a certain position, especially in the end game. Uh, just locate your least active piece and uh, activate it or, you know, improve its position. So here knight is very active, the rook is very active, but the bishop uh, hitting its own f3 pawn is not very active. So here bishop to h3, uh, another case of if you just know these simple principles, uh, you can find a, a, a very strong move here. So here the bishop is now uh, an extremely strong piece on this diagonal and only now will you improve the position of your king. You could also argue, yes, you have to play with the king in the endgame, uh, but first we're going to improve our, our stronger pieces. So here knight to c5, black does the same, and now rook to d6. And now it's very hard for black to find a move. Uh, not, not a lot to do here. Uh, basically, you could try, you can't push any pawns uh, because, for example, this pawn hangs. You could push this pawn, it's exactly what Fabi played. But other than that, there are no moves here. You could like move the rook back and forth, rook, rook e5, rook e7. Uh, but Fabi tried an active move, he played f6, but now comes knight to e6 with check. Wesley is very happy to trade the pieces here. So knight captures, uh, we have bishop captures on e6, and now uh, you don't want to allow uh, rook to d7. The problem is you're down a pawn, and of course your opponent will want to exchange rooks. When you're uh, when you're up a pawn, you, wanna, uh, you want uh, minor pieces on the board. You don't want rooks on the board. So here Wesley would very happily trade rooks. So Fabi prevents this, he doesn't allow the, the rook trade. And now uh, we have c5, another beautiful uh, endgame move. Uh, you want to uh, cement your pawns uh, on a dark square and uh, lock your opponent's pawns on light square. So now you will be able to attack your opponent's pawns, but your opponent's light square bishop will not be able to attack your pawn. So that's also, also very nicely done. So here, bishop to f7. Uh, Fabio, of course, wants to trade bishops, and then it's going to be able to... He, he probably will be able to draw the game uh, even down a pawn with only rooks on the board. But Wesley, of course, also knows that, so he plays bishop to c8, and now he's threatening bishop, rook to d7. Uh, uh, which will win uh, more pawns. So here, uh, there really is nothing better. Fabi has to go for rook e5. He has to give up the two pawns for this one pawn. And uh, Wesley grabs it. Bishop captures on b7. We have rook captures on c5. And now rook captures on c6. Uh, again, uh, Wesley offers a trade of rooks. But Fabi, of course, declines. Rook b5. We have bishop to a6. And now rook to b2 with check. King to g1. Uh, and now comes bishop to e8. So here, Fabi will try to survive. But it's two extra pawns. And there's just no surviving this. His only hope is that uh, Wesley somehow messes up. So here we have rook to c5, uh, putting pressure on this pawn here. So king h6, and now king to f1. The rook is doing a good job cutting off the king from entering the game, uh, but two extra pawns are two extra pawns. You don't really need the king, because as long as this rook is here, the rook is out of the game as well. So here, bishop to d7, now comes bishop back to e2. And now uh, Wesley will uh, nicely demonstrate uh, how you can create... Uh, a wall using your bishop and the rook to get the white king uh, deep into black's position. So here uh, we have bishop to e8. Uh, also here's a nice uh, trick here. For example, f4 opens up a discovery here, so we're going to be in trouble. So bishop to e8, Fabi defends this, and now king f2. So now rook to b3, not allowing uh, the, the king to, to go deeper into, into the position, but now rook d5, now preparing to uh, block uh, uh, the rook's uh, reach to d3 square, and then you're going to bring your king uh, into the game. Game. So here, rook a3, not much to do here for Fabi, now comes bishop to d3. King to g7, now comes king to e3. Uh, we have rook to b3, here comes king to f4, and now rook to b4. But it doesn't really help, we have rook to c5, uh, and now comes uh, bishop to f7. Uh, we have rook to c7, the rook finally uh, gets to the 7th rank, and now uh, we will slowly but surely bring our king uh, deeper into the position. So black prevents this, he doesn't allow king to f5 but here wesley just played g4 and it was in this position on move 52 that fabiano uh, caruana resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here uh well uh, for those of you who are maybe new to chess it might seem like uh like there's a lot more to do here but two pawns are just too much there there's no playing this if it's uh like maybe if it was a uh, uh, bishops of opposite colors you would still have a chance maybe you can trick your opponent into trading rooks and then you, you might be able to draw but with bishops of same color not not happening and especially the white king is more active so to give you a 
a quick example of how the game might continue. For example, black might trade here, and then he has to wait, waste a move. He doesn't have a good move he can play. And now you can just start pushing your pawn. H5 with check, king H6. Now you can just go rook C6, threaten the pawn. And if the king defends it, now you can again push your pawn. H6 check, king captures. You're gonna play G5 check. Now the pawn cannot capture, it's pinned, so you have to move, F captures, and now you have two connected pass pawns, and it's a very, very easy win from there. So yeah, after G4, a beautiful victory by Wesley So, and it's not every day someone defeats the, the world number two in classical chess. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong. Last time I remember it happened was in, I'm, it could be even 20, 2019. Uh... I'm probably wrong, but last game I remember was him losing the, the classical game uh, to, to Peter Leko in Bundesliga, where Leko um, had the white pieces. Fabi played that weird uh, Queen's Gambit decline with, uh, with a6 on the fourth move. But uh, I'm probably wrong, but I, I can't remember Fabi losing a classical game after that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Frank Clarius, Gregoire Schiller, Michael Hildebrand, Steven McGill, uh, and Mario Encinosa for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this very nice tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.